scribbled on the top page of a laboratory notebook from the 1950s were the words, some rough calculations on the feasibility of a laser. This was the first time the term laser was ever used and it was by doctoral student Gordon Gould. Gould correctly anticipated some of the current uses for lasers, such as detecting hidden objects through radar, fusing atoms, and using light to investigate tiny pieces of matter. But 50 years later, and lasers are capable of so much more. What we can do is we can create different conditions um, that are like uh, the nebulae that we see out in space. Some of the recent experiments have helped us to understand what's going on with the iron inside the Earth's core. The way that we've managed to do that is when we fire the laser and focus it onto the target, we are putting that iron onto very high temperatures. The Central Laser Facility at the Science and Technology Facilities Council has an extremely powerful laser known as Vulcan. Similar to light bulbs, Vulcan's power is measured in watts. A regular 100 watt light bulb uses 100 watts every second. But imagine we had a 10 quadrillion watt light bulb, also known as a petawatt. Well, we would need 10,000 national grids to power it for less than a second. We know these petawatt lasers can recreate the conditions inside of interstellar bodies. But in the very near future, upgrades at the Central Laser Facility would give Vulcan the ability to rip apart empty space and create antimatter, one of the very first particles in existence at the very beginning of the universe.